Good morning, New Life. Good morning. As we know, this month is Black History Month. And what we do on Black History Month, we kind of go back in the past and give honor to those who have done great things not only for our race, but for society in general. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Oliver Davis Jr. He was the first African-American general officer of the United States Air Force. Benjamin O'Harris, I'm sorry, Benjamin Oliver Davis Jr. was born in Washington, D.C. in 1912. He graduated from Central High School in Cleveland, Ohio in 1929 and attended Western Reserve University at Cleveland and later the University of Chicago. Now he entered the United States Military Academy at West Point in July 1932. As a result of a deliberate isolation and segregation, the entire four years of his academy term, General Davis was shunned by his classmates. He never had a roommate. He ate by himself. And his classmates hoped this would drive him out of the academy. However, the silent treatment had the opposite effect on him. It made General Davis more determined to graduate. At the start of his senior year at West Point, General Davis applied for the United States Army Air Corps. However, his application was rejected because they did not accept African Americans in the institution. General Davis continued on and he graduated from West Point in 1936. He was the 35th candidate in his class of 278 that graduated. <coughs> Upon graduation from West Point, General Davis was assigned to the all-black 24th Infantry Regiment, one of the original Buffalo Soldier Unit at Fort Benning, Georgia. In June 1937, after a year as commander of that unit at Fort Benning, Georgia, he entered the infantry school and a year later graduated. After infantry school, he was assigned to teach military tactics at Tuskegee Institute, which was a black college in Alabama. Now, this was a way the Army used to avoid having an African-American officer in a segregated and racial society in command of white officers or soldiers. In 1942, President Roosevelt and his administration, in response to public pressure for a greater number of African Americans to participate in the military as war approached, he ordered the War Department to create a black flying unit. This was done to determine whether African Americans had the capability to learn to fly. General Davis was assigned to the first training class at Tuskegee Army Airfield, hence then named Tuskegee Airfield. In March 1942, General Davis earned his pilot wings as one of the first of the fly black officers to complete the course. He was the first black officer to solo an Army Air Corps aircraft and the first officer to get his wings from Tuskegee Air, I mean, from Tuskegee Army Airfield in March 14, 1942. General Davis was transferred to the Army Air Corps in May 1942. Now, as the commander of the 99th Fighter Squadron at Tuskegee Army Air Base, he and his unit was moved to North Africa and later to Sicily. Now, during his tenure, as commander of the 99th Fighter Squadron, his unit escorted over 300 bomber escort missions and never lost an aircraft on his escort. He returned to the United States in October 1943 and assumed command of the 332nd Fighter Group at Sefriel, Michigan. Now, General Davis, of course, throughout his career, accomplished many tasks. Those tasks in which was a challenge, not only for himself, 
but for his culture as well. In the end, General Davis was assigned as Deputy Commander in Chief of the United States Strike Command with headquarters at MacDill Air Force Base, Florida in August 1968 with additional duty as Commander in Chief of the Middle East, Southern Asia, and Africa regions. This military, I'm sorry, on December 9th, 1998, Benjamin O'Harris Davis Jr. was advanced to general. President Clinton pinned his four-star signature on his uniform. His military decorations included the Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, Army Distinguished Service Medal, the Silver Star, Legion of Merit with two oak leaf claws, the Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal with four oak leaf claws, Army Commendation Medal, and two oak leaf clusters, and the Philippine Legion of Honor. General Davis died July 4, 2002, at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. He was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. In honor of his duties and segments in the military and his contribution to this country, as well as a minority group ourselves. At Arlington Cemetery, a red tailed P 51 Mustang, which was the fighter plane that was used in Tuskegee to train the Tuskegee Airmen, better known as the Rail Tail Barbers, those who were armed for their missions in the war flew over his services overhead as a memorial for one of the first African-American Air Force General, one of the first Tuskegee Airmen, and a red tail fighter. child of God. Amen. Even though what I tell myself sometimes, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Because Amen. Amen. positionally, God sees me as holy. Amen.